How's it going? So it's been a while since I've done a video and really any kind of update, but I have uh, been providing some free packs of sounds to the official ASM Hydrosynth Facebook group. And it's been a little while since I've done a new pack and that's just because Nam got in the way and you know, just things have been busy. But during that time, I've still been creating new patches and I wanted to provide a new bank but before I do that I thought it might make sense to kind of tell you guys what this bank is about and explain it a little bit so let's dive in and take a look at what we got here so the first thing that I want to explain is that I went ahead and I made a template uh, the template is kind of an idea of what these patches are based around and what these patches are based around is tape loops tape degradation and um, just essentially being able to get warble that doesn't really sound like a plug-in or doesn't sound like something where somebody just maps an LFO to pitch and makes it wobble back and forth. Um, that's a little too predictable or even doing it with like a, a sample and hold can be a little bit too random. Uh, I thought there's a better way of doing this with the hydrogen. So let's see how I did it. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into LFO 5 on this uh, this tape template here. Again, this is a template, so this patch is very, very basic. Uh, but on LFO5, you're going to notice we have this waveform here, and I'm going to go into step edit, and you're going to see exactly what this is. So there's a big dip in the front of this waveform here, and as we go through it, you'll see that there's all these little ups and downs, these peaks and valleys. But what we're doing here is we have this on a uh, free running LFO, so it's just going to keep looping. And what's interesting about this is, is that we get these kind of crinkles just like tape, but then if you had maybe a cassette head that's getting stuck or you have just bad tape, whatever it is, uh, you would get these uh, pushes and pulls in the tape speed that would create pitch warbles and pitch changes that are not completely random, they're pseudo random, but they're also a little bit predictable. You would hear when your tape head would come back around, you would hear that, that pitch drop or, or speed up. So what I'm doing is I'm using that along with the smooth parameter of the LFO to kind of smooth things out a little bit here, not all the way, but just enough. And then we're going to adjust the speed of it and set that to a bunch of destinations in the mod matrix here. So you'll see I have it going to my pitch. I also have it controlling noise amount to the mixer. I also have it controlling LFO4. You'll see LFO4 is mapped here. None of these have anything mapped to them as a value. Uh, that's because I'm using a macro to control all of these values here. But what I'm also doing is I'm sending the LFO to control other mod matrix destinations inside of here. So what will happen is, is when I go into the macro edit, you'll see here's the depth and I have individual control over each one of these parameters so that I can then, if I play this, this is basically an initialized patch type of sound. But you have this warble going on along with it. And it's really important to uh, listen to how that warble is affecting things. Now, I've also gone and set up a few things, like I have uh, the filter set up a specific way. Uh, envelopes are already set a specific way, so that it's just very quick and easy to build your own uh, sound out of this. I've also created a slop parameter here, and if we go into the slop, you'll see I've done the same sort of thing here. I have all these mod matrix destinations and uh, analog feel. And what those are is they're using the voice mod to manipulate things on a per voice level so that if I turn this up now, now we can take this much, much further, right? So let's dive into what the presets are actually doing. We're going to start off with one called Emacs Tape. And this is based around the idea of a vintage sampler uh, going through tape, uh, through a cassette loop. And what you're going to get is not just that tape warble, not just that slop, but also some aliasing.
Now we can remove that aliasing and just keep the tape sounds and the voice modulation. Bring the tape down and the slop down and hear this patch kind of just as it is. Now we bring the tape up. And what you also notice that you're hearing, you're getting this mechanical noise as well and what that is is uh using that same sort of tape loop scenario here uh we're also bringing in noise but we're bringing it in as the crinkles of the tape get worse so you're getting degradation that's happening on a mechanical level as well we're also doing things like bringing up noise to uh the filter uh and an interesting thing about doing the noise to the filter is uh to take this um for example here you can send noise to filter and you get this kind of scratchy sound, but we can also use the smooth parameter to kind of mellow that out a little bit and make it sound a little bit more like it's going through a tape head uh, because, you know, the tape head, you're getting this, this analog sound through it. So it's not just a digital on and off. You know, there's a little bit of curve to everything that happens. <laughs> This one's called Classist. These presets are designed to really utilize the macros as well. So, for instance, in Escape here, I've done the tape a little bit different here, in which I give you separate dirt and tape condition parameters here. Now, if I bring the tape condition all the way up, the dirt up there's also polyphonic aftertouch now on this one tape lounge this is basically an EP style sound but I give you lots of control using the macros and you're getting that tape effect. You can really kind of hear the tape dragging across the head. You get that mechanical scratching sound. Let's bring that tape condition up. We're going to brighten it a little bit and give it a little bit more dirt. It just sounds kind of dirty and broken. This next one, poorer tape. Bye. 
So you can really hear how the macros in that one allow you to completely burn up the tape and just make it sound like it's, you know, been through the apocalypse. Now here we have point. Let's bring up some bite. Tape. The macro on this one's really nice because it brings in this kind of um, repetitive pluck that fades out. Also, on some of these, I have the delay mod as well. And the delay mod is using the tape warble effect as well. So, if I bring that up really high and get aggressive with it, and we'll bring the delay up a bit here. So you get these nice little warbles that are happening in your delay as well. Beta Maxi is kind of like a, you know, a simple pad sound, but if you had taped over it, you know, multiple times with a Beta Max player. Distant. I'm trying to keep these all kind of just playing similar things so you can hear how they're affected differently. Now what's nice about this is we have this shape. Some nice polyphonic aftertouch for that one as well. Here we have Have Us, and Have Us is another one where I've kind of separated the different tape effects. So you have tape noise, crinkly, burnt, uh, slop, and you can still adjust your wave scan and the sub amount and all that. Dustman. Yeah. Yeah. 
Lend hand, here's a kind of traditional pad sound as well. Mold tape. Water tape. And this is another one that gets pretty drastically different here. VHS night. We can make it a little bit more plucky. Slow it down. And there you have it. So these are all just different kind of takes on the idea of lo-fi tape sounds in the hydrosynth without having to use external effects, without having to use expensive pedals and that sort of thing. Here you can just get that tape degradation sound with basic synthesis. Um, using step LFO, using noise, using smoothing, um, and then mapping those to interesting parameters and then mapping those parameters to a macro knob, you have a lot of really flexible control there. Um, 
And it might sound complicated uh, when you get into doing things like mapping LFOs to destinations, which then in turn modulate other mod matrix destinations, which are then in turn modulated by a macro. But once you get the hang of it and kind of dig through the template and understand what's going on there, you'll be able to make those kinds of sounds yourself pretty easily. Uh, it, it's really not as complicated as it sounds, I promise. Uh, so if you have any questions, please join the ASM Hydrosynth Facebook group. Uh, and uh, it's the only official ASM Hydrosynth Facebook group on there. And it's where I myself am there and I'm pretty frequently uh, available for comment and questions and really the community is is super super useful everybody's very helpful and uh, we try to make sure that it stays a welcoming environment so you get a chance stop by we'll have some fun peace